Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a good morning. Welcome to everybody at home. All right, we're going to get us to some praise and worship. So why don't we stand and let's all sing together, eh? Come on. Hey, hey, hey.
strength like no other reaches to me. Sing that again. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no to me in the fullness and in the fullness of your grace in the power of your name you lift me up you lift me up in the fullness in the fullness of your grace in the power of your name you lift me up you lift me up you are my hope hope like no Church, declare it out this morning. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. Sing in the fullness. And in the fullness of your grace. Power of your name, you lift me up. You lift me up in the fullness, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your. Unfailing love, stronger than mountains, deeper than oceans, reaches to me. Come on, sing that again. Unfailing love. Unfailing love, stronger than. us up. You know, I'm so glad we serve a God who lifts up and doesn't tear down, you know. I'm so glad that we serve a God who restores instead of pulls apart. And you know, we're going to get into this next song and this time of worship and maybe you're looking for some restoration. Maybe you need to be lifted up. Maybe you've been brought down for quite a while. 
maybe things are piling up at home, maybe work life is getting a bit, taking up too much of your mental space. And you just need a moment just, just to declare in your situation and everything that you're going through where it feels like you're just tearing at the seams that actually God you go before me and you also go behind me you're also backing me you're supporting me and just as our prayer team comes up we're just going to enter into this time of declaration wherever you're at if you need prayer we've got an amazing prayer team that would love to stand with you and speak life into you but even just where you're at, just to spend this time to declare that I serve a God who in every situation not only goes before me, but also goes behind me. Come on, church. The Lord is my shepherd. goes before me, defender behind me, and I won't fear, I'm filled with anointing, I'm filled with anointing. Cups overflowing, no weapon can harm me, and I won't fear. Sing it out, sing hallelujah. Mountains and valleys, we love you, Lord. His joy is refreshing, restores my soul. Mercy and goodness, mercy and goodness. Gives me assurance that I see His glory, that I see His glory. Face to face. Sing it out, sing hallelujah. Yours. 
my victory, my victory, my victory, my victory, my victory, my victory, my victory. if you believe it right now maybe you can't see it maybe you can't quite feel it but there's something powerful about declaring right where you are as you've brought yourself in you might be feeling alone you might be feeling like you need some comforting you might be feeling like you just need some peace we're just going to sing that part again your spirit lives within me so I will walk in your peace, declaring right now, from, from this point on, as I walk out of this building, I will walk in your peace. I may not feel it, I might still be anxious and worried, I might still be doubting, but I'm gonna declare that there's victory. Come on church, this is your chance to declare. that battle plan, you know? Church, there's a battle going on out there. And I think the biggest struggle we have is we don't plan for it. We don't prepare for it. This is what's so powerful about church because we can come together. We can come together and we can make some plans. We can make some plans that even when I'm feeling worried, I'm gonna have victory. Even when I'm feeling anxious and overwhelmed, I'm going to have peace. This is your chance to plan. This is your chance to prepare. There's some people who need to do some planning. Maybe you've been losing all week. Maybe you're getting overwhelmed financially. Maybe you feel like everything's falling apart. Maybe you're wearing a great mask and you're holding it all together. Maybe even your partner doesn't know. This is your chance to plan. This is your chance to strategize. This is your chance to declare. Your spirit lives within me. Your spirit lives within me. Lord God, we thank you that we serve a living God a living, breathing God. We thank you that your spirit is active. It's not dormant. It's not in the past. It is present. It is active. Lord God, I thank you that I can call on at any time I need. I thank you that when I'm at my weakest, when I'm at my loneliest, when I'm at my most uncertain moments, I can call on your spirit. I can call on your peace. I can call on your strength. I can call on your victory. I can call on your love. I can call on your support. I can call on your grace. When I'm feeling so insufficient, I can call on your mercy. When I'm feeling so unworthy, I can call on you. Lord God, we just thank you for this time that we can come here and we can plan we can strategize and God I pray we don't ever take advantage of it 
I pray we don't ever take it for granted. That we live in a nation that we can come together. And so, Lord God, right now, we just lift you up. We thank you for all you are doing in our lives. We thank you for exactly where you've placed us. We may not understand it, but Lord God, we thank you. And we give you all the glory in your mighty name we say. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, hey, look, you can take a seat. Turn to the person next to you. Say hello. Welcome. Give them an eyebrow raise. We're online as well. I almost forgot until I just read it. I was like, oh, yeah, online. Oh, welcome if you're online. Um, hopefully um, you've, you know, had someone to say hello to. And if you didn't, just write it in the chat. That's cool. Eyebrow, I, I, eyebrow raise yourself, you know, like, what's up? What's up? You need like a mirror. If you're at home and you're alone, just have a mirror. Hey, how's it going, you know? What's this like? Anyway, I'm blabbling. That's bad. Welcome. Um, if you're new here, my name's Grant. I'm going to be your MC this morning. And hey, hey. Um, we have something we like to call a one card. Pretty much, um, it's your one-stop shop for everything, okay? If you want to know more about something, if you've got a question, if you want to find some answers, just fill it in. But if you're new here today, we would love for you to grab one of these. You can find it at the info desk on your way in um, or just down the back over there. And we'd love for you to fill in a little bit about yourself. Tick, I'm a first-time visitor. And then hand it in at the info desk after the service and you'll get a free coffee on us. Or in a free crunchy as well. And if you don't want the coffee, you can just pass it to me or Elliot, and we'll gladly have your coffee, okay? Anytime, don't worry about it. You'll find a friend in us, okay? Um, if you're online, um, I'm pretty sure there's like this one card, it will just pop up and you can click it. You may not get a free coffee, but you can make it yourself, so that's cool. Is that all right? Is that cool? Are we awake? Yeah. Good to be here. Good to see you guys. It's nice to be at the 10 a.m. service. Instead of the 8.30, you know, this is like a new crowd, just, you know, seeing all the people out there. You know, some, oh, I, know, I know you, that's cool. <laughs> nah. Um, and also a couple of other things we have coming up. Christmas, bo Christmas boxes, okay? Um, we have set a date. It is Saturday, the 5th of December. Um, if you would like to come and help, many hands make light work. Um, so the more we have, the easier it is, the quicker we can get through. We've got so many boxes to pack. Um, so if you want to get involved, if you want to sign up, head to the info desk. We'd love to jot down um, your name and then let you know a little bit more about it. But Saturday, 5th of December, set aside the day. Hopefully we won't need the whole day, but um, we'd love to just have your support and your help. Is that all right? That's all right. Cool. The other thing we have is on Saturday, the 28th of November, we have a market day. Okay, so pretty much out in the car park, there'll be heaps of stalls selling pretty much anything. If you have something you want to sell, maybe you've got a product, maybe you've got some stuff at home that you're like, man, this has been sitting here for ages and my husband has not gotten rid of it, I'm going to sell it. Or maybe your husband spends too long on it, so you're like, let's sell it, okay? Bring it along, that's fine as well. Um, you can pay 20 bucks to set up a stall and then pretty much you just put anything on that table and people can buy it, okay? Um, yeah, so it's from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's pretty much it. That's all, that's all you need to know, okay? 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Come along, um, buy a stall if you want, or just come along to buy heaps of stuff. That's fine as well. I'm happy with either, okay? Is that cool? That's cool, cool. All right, hey, we got um, oxygen. Uh, so pretty much if you are from intermediate all the way through to high school, we've got an amazing program. You can head down the back um, and get into some, some scripture, which will be super cool. Is that cool? Hey. All right, guys, well, for the rest of you, you're stuck here, okay? Um, and it was a super good word, so I hope you're ready. We are part three of our God Behaving Badly. Uh, why don't we give a warm welcome as we invite Pastor Ends up. All right. Hey, how's it going, everybody? We're part three of our series, God Behaving Badly. Honestly, if you missed out last week, uh, we... We had, is, the question was, is God homophobic? Let me tell you, it's one of the best teaching you're going to hear on the subject. And what we discover is that God is not phobic about anything, but we can. So I encourage you, if you're at home, just continue to listen to this, then go back on YouTube. But if for you, you can go back and watch it on YouTube or maybe listen to a podcast. It was a great message uh, on, is God homophobic? Well, God behaving badly, it's just this, this, even the title causes you to, to think twice about it. And, and, and it's been... We purposely gave this title so it caused you to respond to it and ask this question, does God 
behave badly. And, you know, if, if you're anything like me, are there verses in the Bibles where you will, you're open up and you think, oh, I wish it didn't say that. Or I wish it may have unpacked it a bit more or give a bit more understanding because, you know, there's some verses I happily read to, to my friends who do not know Jesus. And the other verses, maybe I won't read this verse because uh, it's, mm, it's a bit tough. It's, a t- it's tough for me, so it's going to be really tough for them. Well, this is what the series is all about. I, I want to start by reading a quote. Um, by a man by the name of Richard Dawkinson. Anybody heard of Richard Dawkinson? Well, he wrote this book called The God Delusion. And, and he said, God is not only a, only a delusion, but a pernicious delusion. And it's not just a de- delusion, but a pernicious delusion. If you don't know what a pernicious is, I don't even know myself, but it sounds really interesting. But the God, of, and this is what he says, the God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. That's what he says, in all fiction jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak, a vindictive, bloodthirsty, ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist. Oh my goodness, this guy's got issues. But, but he, here's, here's the thing though. Even though he's saying these things, well, this guy's got a lot of issues, a lot of people actually hold this view. And let's be honest, some of you in this room, you may hold some of these views. I, I don't know. So this series is all about, let's explore this. Is God angry, homophobic, sexist, um, a racist? Is he all these things? And this is what this series is all about. And you know what's really interesting? I was just thinking, if, you, if, you live, if you've come from another country, you come to New Zealand, Aotearoa, the, lo- the land of the long white cloud. What a beautiful country we live in. It's, it's an amazing country. You know, we, we, we love one another. We don't judge anybody, right? <laughs> in fact, uh, many Kiwis believe that in New Zealand, we, we don't think New Zealand is a racist country at all. We can look at other countries, yeah, that's a racist country, yeah, that's a racist country, but not this country. Not in, not, not in God's own, right? Yeah. Not here. No, but everyone, you have all these issues, but not here. Um, I, um, I, am, I am half... Pakia, European, I'm on my dad's side, and on my mum's side, I'm half, I'm half Cook Island Polynesian, right? So uh, and I'll tell you what, it's, it's easy for me to slip in either side. I can be with my white brethren or my brown brethren. I just slip in, right? And I and just go, but sometimes I forget my makeup. And sometimes I do hear comments that are, uh, are prejudiced to each group. So I'm with my white brethren, they might say, slip something out, but this group of people, which kind of offends me. And now I'm with my brown brothers, they'll say something about my white brothers, and they all feed me too because they forget that I'm also part of this. And, and here's the thing. The issue with racism in New Zealand is the fact that it's, it's subtle. It's subtle. And that's the real problem. It's because it's so subtle, we don't believe New Zealand's a racist country. Because it's very subtle. It just slips in. And, and you know what? And we often say these words and words will slip out of our mouth or, or, uh, because it's subtly. You know, I've heard people say things who believe they're not racist at all. You know, have you said these words? Have you said things like, you know, someone cuts you off, you have a look, and you say, oh, man, look, the Asian drivers, you know. <laughs> you ever see that? No, no one here. Or if it's a woman, if you're a guy, if it's a woman, ah, oh, woman drivers. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we already dealt with his God six a couple weeks ago. Go back and listen to that. That's fantastic as well. Uh, um, now when somebody is really slow at, um, at, a, at a roundabout, and there's no cars, and I'm thinking, are they waiting for someone to invite them to go? Um, I, 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 this is what I don't do. I don't look at the driver and go, ah, oh, it's a woman driver. Ah, oh, it's an Asian driver. This is, this is what I say. Man, overcautious driver. I say that. And, and you know what? But by me saying that, it just means that I'm impatient. And now it's all about, actually, it's me that's not cautious. And actually, actually I'm the issue, not that person. And you know, there's nothing. When I, I have a look and I see an older person driving, this is, this is what I do. And I see an older person driving, this is what I don't say. Ah, oh, no, these old people need to stay off the road. If they, you know, I don't say that. Because I've heard people say, oh, you know what? The problem with the, if, we, if the old people didn't drive, then we're having, having crashes. You know, that, that is, again, that's prejudice. We're being prejudiced. What I do, if I see someone who is older, I, I extend a lot of grace. The reason why I extend a lot, okay, I'm gonna t- it's, a, it's fine. Because, you know, when I get to the age, I want someone to extend grace to me because I know I'm going to be exactly like that. I might even be worse, okay? Anyway, and, and here's a th- we hear all these, and, and it's so subtle, isn't it? Like, you know, um, the Warriors, the problem with the Warriors is too many Islanders in the team. 
You know, it's too brown. You need some, need some, you need, you need some good Australians who can think. And I was like, well, what are you trying to say about the islanders? They, they can't think? Or, or, or you know, the, you know, you know you got, those, those Indians are always ripping us off. You ever heard someone say that before? Or, man, look at all our shops. They're all owned by, by, by you know, all these words, Asians and Indians, and it's just slipping out. It's like, well, oh, no, I'm not racist. No, 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 not at all. But it's subtle. And that's the real problem. And that's the real issue we have. And, or, or, you know, those oh, white people are just arrogant. Arrogant. They think they're always right. Oh, we really, uh, we really love what you do, but our way is better. You know, we hear things like that. It just slips out. Like, where do these words come from? You know, and and we need to challenge ourselves. You know, what's going on with New Zealand? Because if we don't deal with it, if we don't recognize it, then it can become a real issue in our lives. And little old New Zealand, Aotearoa, God's own, the land of the long, like no issues in this country. Well, man, we've got Jacinda Ardern. She's like the the celebrity uh, prime minister. It's all good here. Right, and and, um, and then um, the Argentinians turned up. Anyway, that's another story. Just keep going, <laughs> keep going, keep going. I'm still healing from that, healing from that. Any Argentinians in this room? South Americans, anyway. God, we love you. God bless you. <sighs> Just gonna be humble, like now. Anyway, <laughs> today we're gonna explore this question: Is God racist? Is he racist? Do, is he? Because he's. I, I heard on the radio, this person. She's a humanist, and this is what she said. She said, "Oh, the God of the Old Testament is racist. He chooses one people, chooses one pe- as 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 a chosen people. Therefore, if one people group, the Israelites, if they are the chosen people, everyone else isn't chosen. He's a racist God. He's an angry God. He's a different God from the New Testament, where Jesus welcomes in all nations. Well, in the Old Testament, he just just chooses one nation." Everyone else, I reject, right? And therefore, the Bible is a contradiction. This is what I was hearing on the radio, and, 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 and it caused me to go, now, I, I got offended when I heard that. That's because I, this, is, this is what we believe. We believe that the Bible is one unified story from beginning through to end. It's, it's a narrative. It's a unified story, and the Bible does not contradict with yourself. And this is why we have this series called God Behaving Badly. So let's look at it. When, when we read the Bible, it is clear in the Old Testament that Israel is God's chosen nation, God's chosen people, his, cho- he, he is his chosen people. Here's the question, why are they God's chosen people? And what are they chosen for? Why are they God's chosen people, and what are they chosen for? Is it that they're chosen, so therefore only Israel can be saved, and everybody else can go to hell? Is that is that what the Old Testament is all about? Well, it's only, only, only through Israel people get saved, and if you're not, if you're not part of God's chosen people, well, you can go to hell. Is this what the Old Testament is all about? Well, let's, let's have a look. Let's, let's go into some of these, these scriptures. And so turn with me to Genesis chapter 12. And so God blesses Abraham. He chooses one man, and through this one man, he forms a nation, the nation of Israel. So he's the father of Israel. When God blesses Abraham, and this is, this is what he says to him, this is the, this is the, this is the blessing that he gives to Abraham, also known as the Abrahamic covenant. He says, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. And so when you read that, oh, there we go. He's obviously showing favoritism And if you're not part of Abraham's seed, then you can just forget it. But is that what God is saying? Is is that what God believes? And and here's the thing, we we don't actually, what does it say? What does it say right at the end? What's what's the purpose? Why are they a chosen people? What is their purpose as chosen people? And it says it right here, their purpose is this. This is the purpose. And all the families on earth will be blessed through you. God chooses this one family to be a vehicle of blessings to all families of the earth. This is the purpose of why they were chosen. They were chosen to be a blessing to all families. So after God rescues his people from slavery out of Egypt, he leads them to Mount Sinai and he establishes a covenant partnership 
with his people, with, with this chosen people. He, he establishes this covenant on Mount Sinai, this covenant partnership, and he gives the terms to this covenant, to this, gives the terms of agreement to this partnership. And the terms of agreement is what we know as the Ten Commandments or, or the Torah. There's actually 613. 613 commands. Um, and that the, these are the terms to this agreement that they had to abide. And this is, this is what it says in Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. It says, now, this is God speaking, now if you obey me and obey me fully, so if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Oh, there it goes again. Oh, only Israel is the treasured possession. Everybody else isn't. Israel's my treasured possession, and all you guys aren't. You're my favorite son, and you guys aren't. Anybody got a favorite? No, you know, just keep going. <laughs> just talk to my daughter. She'll give you a whole story of why she believes that her younger brother is the favorite in the family. And I said, no, she, he is my favorite 13-year-old boy, and you're my favorite uh, 15-year-old girl. Anyway, that's her age. Is Bradley in here? Okay, good. He's somewhere, somewhere doing something. Okay, so here we go. So in the, but in the very next sentence, God reveals why he chose Israel. So we, we know their purpose is to be, be a blessing to all the families of the earth. That's their purpose, to be a blessing. Now, here's the why. Here's why they were chosen. This is why, the, although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. This is speaking to Moses to speak to the Israelites. And what does he say? Is that you are a kingdom of priests. So all of Israel, the chosen people, you are a kingdom of priests. Now, what's the role of a priest? The role of a priest is to mediate or restore relationship between two parties. So Israel, Israel, as chosen people, their purpose, the, the reason they were, they were chosen is so they can um, bring restoration to all the nations of the world. This is why they were chosen, to bring restoration to all the world. Um, for God to, to choose um, to, to, to love the whole world wasn't plan B. Oh, you know what I'm going to get? My plan A is just Israel. Oh, that didn't work out in the Old Testament. Oh, in the New Testament through Jesus, it's everybody. So that's now plan B. No, no, it was from the start. It was part of his mission right from the start that they were chosen people. Why? It said that they can be God's representative to the nations of the world. And this is why they were chosen to be God's representative. But so, so they're, they're God's representative, right? They're representing God. And so the nations of the world can come to know God and, and experience God's goodness. And they can look at the way that they're living as, wow, we want, a, we, we want a God like yours. Like what, what Yalta was saying with, with uh, all these gods. You got all these gods you're praying to? Well, we, we just go to Jesus. And they're like, wow, we want, a, we want a God like, that's who we want. And that's who we're supposed to be, representatives to the world, as priests, representatives of the world. But when, but when Israel is, is, when they finally come to the land of Canaan, and the land of Canaan is their inheritance, right? And, and, and it becomes, becomes the nation, the, the land of Israel, land of Canaan. But the, there's a problem with the land, the land of Israel or the, or the land of Canaan. It's full of Canaanites, people, a people group, a people group. And this is what God says to Joshua in Joshua 10, verse 40. So, oh, so this, is what, this, is, this is what Joshua writes down in Joshua 10, 40. He says, so Joshua subdued the whole region, including the hill country, the, the, hill country, the Negev, the western foothills, the mountain slopes. Together with all their kings, he left no survivors. He totally destroyed all who breathed, just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded and you read that, because what? what? What did I just read? That God commanded that Joshua was to completely wipe out the Canaanites? Did he, did he actually command this? I don't know about you, but that sounds like genocide. I don't know about you, but that sounds like ethnic cleansing. The, well, isn't God the God of mercy, the God of love? Oh, well, okay, I can see this God of the Old Testament is an angry he, he is a racist God because he's so different to the God of the New Testament. Well, so is the, does the Bible contradict itself? What's going on in this narrative? What's, what's happening in this storyline? 
One thing, when you begin to read ancient texts, there's a lot of what we, what we call hyperbole statements or hyperbole sentences where this is what it's, because Joshua says, this is what it says, we left no survivors. We totally destroyed all who breathed. breathed. But when we read the narrative, we, we find out that actually, no, they didn't do that. There was heaps of living everywhere. But it's called a hyperbole statement. It's like the Argentinians killed the All Blacks yesterday, last night. Oh, no one laughed there. Yeah, okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for bring, opening up their wound. Yeah. Like, we know the Argentinians didn't kill them, but that's a hyperbole statement. You're like, oh, man, we, man, we, we, totally, we totally smashed the other team. Like, well, that's a hyperbole. We, didn't, we just won by one try, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah, all Blacks got smashed by the... Anyway, just keep, keep coming back to this thing, you know. I'm, I'm thinking I need prayer. I need prayer. It's good. Anyway. But these are strong words. These are very strong words. And if the command to destroy the people of Canaan was based upon race, then yes, we can say that the God of the Old Testament is issuing genocide or ethnic cleansing, that he is indeed racist. However, oh, you knew I was going to say that, right? However, when we read Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 5, this is what Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 5 says. He says, It is not because you are so good or have such integrity that you are about to occupy their land. So here's the thing. God's saying, look, you chosen people, you're about to inherit the land of Canaan. But you're not inheriting the land because you're, you are like, oh, you are the super kids. You are amazing. In fact, you guys are a real headache. This, man, I just feel like destroying you guys sometimes. You guys are just a real pain in my backside. That's not why you're going in. That's not why you're going into this land. And then he gives you what? This, this, this is why he says, the Lord your God will drive these nations out ahead of you because of their, of their what? Of their wickedness. And to fulfill the oath, he swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, the, the command to, de to destroy was not based on race, but, on, but upon judgment. See, what do we know about the ancient Canaanites? Even by, um, even by ancient standards, Man, these Canaanites, they were evil. They were hideous. In fact, their surrounding neighbors shuddered at the things they did. You, do, you know, do you know the main religion for the Canaanites was their, uh, was their fertility gods. It was all about fertility gods. And, 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 they, and they began, and they practiced what their fertility gods did. And sexually, nothing was sacred. Even sex with children and sex with animals. Uh, honestly, and not only that, but they practiced child sacrifice. In fact, the god that they worshipped was a god called Moloch. And Moloch was, this, was pictured as this upright god uh, with a bull head and with outstretched arm, and they'll put fire in the belly of, of Moloch. And on the, arms, on the arms of Moloch, they will put babies alive on there, so they were burned to death. Not just babies, but, but children as old as four years old were killed on, on this, uh, upon their god. In fact, archaeologists would reveal that they, they, would, they would find thousands and thousands and thousands of remains of children who were sacrificed in this way. Now, the, the reason why God judged Canaan was not based upon their race, was because they were wicked. They were wicked. They were nasty. They were terrible. What they did to their children. This is why they were judged, not, be, not based upon their race, but because they were wicked. Leviticus 19, verse 34 says this. It says, the, the foreigner, this, so this, Leviticus, again, it's, it's the Torah. It's the Torah. It's, the, it's, the, um, it's, the, it's the, the covenant, the covenant God makes of Israel, right? It's, the, it's, it's, it's their uh, covenant agreement. So this is, your, this is part of the covenant agreement. So Leviticus 19 is part of this covenant agreement. So if we, if we are going to be in covenant partnership together, this is the agreement we're making with one another. And this is the agreement. He, this is what he says. This is what God says. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Is there anybody in this room who, who was born outside of this country? Well, according to the word of God, this is how we've got to treat you. We've got to treat you as if you're native born. Love them as yourself. So if there's any foreigners in this room, we've got to love you 
as ourselves. For you, and then he goes, for you were foreigners in Egypt. And so, because you were once a foreigner, remember, so he's talking to Israel, remember, you were once a foreigner in Egypt. And don't you start treating people as how, as how the Egyptians treated you. Now that you're in this land, now don't you become like the Egyptians. And the sad thing is Israel it, it became just like the Egyptians. He goes, for, for I am the Lord your God. Now this verse does not sound like a racist God. Love the foreigner living among you. Love them as you love yourself. Love the Somalian who lives next door to you. Show compassion to that lady who's on the bus in full burqa. Show love to that person wearing a turban in the office. Show love to that patch member that you see in the shopping mall. Oh. How am I going to show love to that person? You know, we don't show love to those kind of people. Here's the thing. If racism doesn't stem from the Bible, where does it come from? Where did it come from? Has anybody who ever heard of a man by the name of Aristotle? Aristotle was born in 384 BC. He is known as the father of Western logic. One, known as one of the greatest philosophers ever born, the father of Western logic. But I don't know if you knew this, but well, during the first couple of weeks ago, we shared about his God sexist. Aristotle believed that woman was a deficient form of men. This is what it, so when we talk about sexism in our culture, it doesn't stem from the Bible, it stems from. Greek philosophy. This is where it comes from. It seeps into our Western culture. But this is what he also believed. He believed that for some people, being enslaved was just and even beneficial for them. He believed that there are some human beings who, are natu who naturally lack the capacity to, de to deliberate. Therefore, the typical slave is enslaved justly. Aristotle argued that non-Greeks were natural slaves. This is what he argued. If you weren't Greek, then you are a natural slave. Yeah. So here, let us help you by becoming slaves. We're, we're doing you a favor. In fact, in fact, much of the Black Lives Movement in America, it stems out of this Greek thinking, and it's seeped into our Western, has seeped into our Western culture, and it's perpetuated by Darwinism and evolution. It's, it seeps into, in fact, Aristotle's argument was one of many that was used to defend slavery. In fact, the American slaveholders, they incorporated much of Aristotle's arguments claiming that slavery benefited the enslaved. Slavery was, justi was justified because black people were inherently less rational and intelligent. It seeped, into, it seeped into our culture. Racism does not come from the Bible. God is certainly not racist. It's something that seeped into, through Greek philosophy, into the Western mindset, Western thinking. So how do we overcome racism? Be honest. Talk about it. Ask the question, am I subtly racist? <laughs> do I see what, say words like that? Oh, I don't really mean it. Do you? Then why do you say it? If you don't mean it, then why do you say it? That we can't justify words like these. We can't justify it. We need to confront it in our own life. Don't ignore it. See, in order to alleviate injustice, it is essential to recognize the, that injustice exists, that it does exist. We're just like, oh, not, not in New Zealand. Little old God zone. Come on. You know, if we're not part of the solution, then we're part of the problem. See, if we, if we want to help to end the injustices that racism causes, then we need to be aware of that some of these prejudices have been woven into our life and to the fabric of our society, even into our thinking. We need to educate ourselves about these, that why do these prejudices exist? Think about it. Ask yourself this question. Where does it come from? Learn about it. Learn about how, how did our society, I'm talking about New Zealand context. I'm not talking about American context. I'm talking about New Zealand context. How did our society get here? 
why are there people groups around that their prejudices exist? We need to ask why. Educate ourselves. Understand. Understand before we judge. Knowledge is power. Let's be the reason someone believes in the goodness of people. Come on, will you be the reason why someone believes in the goodness of people? So I met a lot of people who say the problem of this world is people. So let us be the reason why people believe that there is the goodness of people. See, Israel was, was supposed to reveal God to the nations. But yet God's people continually failed. They fell in, they, they were meant to show that this is the way we worship God, but they started worshiping all the other gods around them. And they started to, to participate in the injustice and oppression. The oppressed became the oppressors. So once again, God chooses one out of many so that the many will be blessed. So when Jesus comes onto the scene, he does exactly that. He sought out the ostracized and the hated, the lepers, the tax collectors, and the prostitutes. You know, tax collectors that were seen as, you know, if I was going to put tax collectors in today's term, it's not the IRD. <laughs> so the tax, the tax collectors in our term is the mobsters. These are the people he went to. In fact, he had some of these guys on his team. He looked out for the poor, and he told his disciples to do the same. Jesus attacks racism head on with the story of the Good Samaritan. Many of us in this room are familiar with the story of the Good Samaritan. So let us, let's read the story again. In Luke chapter 10, verse 30, a man was, this is Jesus telling the story, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Spiritual leaders. These leaders. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, again, spiritual people. When he, came, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. Here's the thing. What, 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 if, you, if you're not unaware of this, many of you know this, but Samaritans were were hated by the Israelites. If you're a Jew, you're a Samaritan, we, we don't talk. We don't, you guys are disgusting to us. In fact, if you're a Jew and you're, you're traveling along and you come to Samaria and you, want, you need to go to the town that's on the other side of Samaria, instead of walking through the town, you'll walk around. I'm not even going to put my foot in that town. and I'm not going to get my shoes, um, get myself dirty in that town. No way. The dust, is, is in, the dust of the Samaritan isn't worth to be on my sandals. This is how much they, they hated him. So we've got this man who's beaten by robbers, he's half dead, this Israelite beaten, half dead. And we've got the spiritual leaders walking by, people who are spirit-fed, a uh, spirit-led and spirit-fed, walk by. But the, the, so the ones that should have helped them didn't. And the one who did shouldn't. Why? Because he was a Samaritan. Even the title, you ever heard The Good Samaritan? Even that title was racist. The Good Samaritan. Did you know that? The Good Samaritan is racist. Because you know what that implies? It supplies that only that Samaritan was good. All the others aren't. The Good Samaritan. What? So the others aren't? There was only one Good Samaritan? Even the title we put on the Bible is racist. Think about it. I'm a Good Samaritan. So the others aren't? And so he, what does he do? Well, let's continue reading this. So what is this, this person who's hated, because, who is separated because of racism, where racism has separated two people groups? He went to him and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to the innkeeper and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave it to the innkeeper, looked after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse for any extra expenses you may, he may have, right? Here's my credit card. Which of these, this is Jesus now speaking to the, to the spiritual leaders. Which of these, these three, do you think was a neighbor 
to the man who fell into the hands of robbers. The expert in the law of the Torah who understood the terms of agreement that God had issued at Mount Sinai. Well, it's the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, well, go and do likewise. You know what the most important thing that this Samaritan did? That led to all the other actions? Is that he had compassion. That he saw this person made in the image of God. And he did not let race or any other prejudice separate them. He saw a person in need. Didn't know why, didn't ask that question. Oh, why, why, oh, why is this guy on the street? Oh, he probably spent all his money on drugs and alcohol. He's on there. He didn't ask why. He saw a need and he acted. He had compassion. Jesus knew that racism can be overcome with compassion. The compassion of the, the Samaritan led him to extreme acts of hospitality towards someone who probably wouldn't have had wouldn't have spent a minute with him. Here's the thing, Jesus calls his followers to do the same. This is why Peter, the apostle Peter, when he's writing his letter of 2 Timothy, of First Timothy, he's writing his letter of 1 Timothy, he writes this, and he's writing this letter to a mixed group of Jesus followers. Mixed group of Jesus followers. When I look in this room, I see a mixed group of Jesus followers in this room. I see people from different nations, diff different ethnic backgrounds. And here's Peter, he's writing to you. He's writing to the believers. And you know the language he uses, the language that Peter chooses to use? The language that Peter chooses to use is the chosen people language. And he's writing to you. Every single one of you sitting in this room, everyone who's looking at me and on their TV, whatever screen, he writes to you. And this is what Peter writes to you. This is what he says. But you are a chosen people. You are a chosen people. Why are you chosen? What's your purpose as a chosen people? But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. You're not just a priest, but your royal priest. This kingship. A royal, what's the role of a priest? You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation set apart for God, a holy nation. To all you mixed race people in this room, this is what the Apostle Paul, Peter is writing to you. But you, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special position, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. You as God's chosen people, God's royal priesthood, God's holiness, God's most prized possession. You've been called out of the darkness to bring the light of God, the compassion of God, to bring the exclusive love of God to all people. This is why you've been called. This is why you've been chosen. This is why you're a royal priesthood. This is why you are a holy nation, to bring the exclusive love of God to all people and all nations, to see that person with, the, with wearing a gang patch, that person in a burqa, see them as someone made in the image of God, that God loves them. And, and as we begin to show our love to them, begin to reflect the glory of God on them so, that, so they too might one day take to take Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Will you be that people? Will you be the people that, that Peter is talking about here? Will you be that chosen people? Will you be that royal priesthood? Be the reason someone believes in the goodness of people. Be the reason. See, when we look at Scripture, we discover that God never behaves badly. And God certainly is not racist. It's a unified story from start to finish. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We love you that you have chosen us with purpose, that we can be the, the vehicle to take your love to the world, take your exclusive love to all people. Father, I just pray for any prejudice we may have. May we ask the question, where does this come from? Why do I have this prejudice? Why, why is our society where it is today? Father, let us be, be, be the solution, not the problem.
So Father, as I come, we come before you, we repent before you all, all these prejudices we may have and things that we've said. Well, I'm not racist, but Lord, Lord, I repent of the things that I've said. Lord, I come before you as your chosen people, as your royal priesthood, holy nation, your prized possession. And Lord, let us be the light to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Um, you know, if you're here this morning, you, maybe you've never had a relationship with God. Maybe you've never had, you know, you, you, you've heard about it, you thought, well, he's racist. But you're here right now, you, you feel like, actually, all these things I preconceived on this was wrong. And you get the sense in your spirit that, you know, I need to do something about it. How about this? Make a decision to follow him. Because when you follow him, it will change your life. You'll begin to see people in the light of what, how God sees them. And you'll begin to see yourself as God sees you. He loved you so much that, that he stepped into his creation and he binded himself with flesh and that on the cross he died for your sins, for, for your greatest regrets. And all those that believe and receive his grace had the right to be called sons and daughters chosen by him, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's most prized possession. Why? To be the light to the world. And if, you, if that's true, if you want to make a decision to follow him, I want to encourage you to make a decision right now. It's a decision important in your heart. Make a decision to follow him. I'm not going to get you to say any words. What I want you to do is make a decision here. That, you know, I want, it's time for me to leave my life of sin. It's going to be slow, but Lord, let me follow you. Help me. Lead, lead me out of this life. Let me follow you. Make a decision today. If you, if, you, if you commit to making a decision to follow him, I want you to do something. I want you to fill in this one card. Tick the second box there that I'm making a commitment to follow him. Hand it into the info desk. The reason we want you to do that is because we want to give you a gift. We want to give you a Bible. It's the Word of God. Honestly, if you want to follow Jesus, read about Jesus. And it'll be the best decision you'll ever make. But we can't help you unless you let us help you. So please encourage you. Fill in the box. Tick the box. Hand it into the desk and begin to live a life for free today. Well, next week we're gonna be um, exploring, is God angry? Is God of the Old Testament angry? You ever thought about that, that God's up there angry at me because I've done something and he's up there no, to us to say, no, no, I did wrong. Well, let's explore that next week. God bless everybody, thank you, thank you. Uh, Grant, give a hand for Grant. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> Why don't we give Ant another round of applause? That was good, there we go, that's more like it. Hey, look, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we can't do what we do without you guys. So thank you um, to all those who help support us as a local church. Um, we're able to um, help schools in our area. We're able to help missionaries going overseas. We're able to keep the lights on here. Um, so thank you very much. If you do want to help support um, uh, this local church, there's three ways you can give. We've got our Dropbox at the back. Um, we've got FPOS at the info desk, and you can also give online as well. But Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you encouraged something a little bit different. Don't always hear messages on God behaving badly. Um, and look forward to seeing you next week as well. Otherwise, good luck. God bless. Enjoy.